to successful roadside revegetation using native plants. We're glad you could join us. What you are seeing as we drive along this scenic roadway is one example of several successful roadside revegetation projects constructed by the Federal Highway Administration. Roadside revegetation is not a topic most people think about as they drive through the scenic landscapes of our beautiful public lands. But it's surprising to learn how much this landscape has changed since the completion of the road construction. The healthy and sustainable natural environment you see here now looks like it's always been this way, but it's actually the result of careful planning, well-coordinated teamwork, and very advanced applied science. Roadside revegetation using native plants has proven to be an essential part of road construction. In this video, you will meet a dedicated group of experts who will describe the benefits of roadside revegetation, which is both art and science. Some of the many benefits include the careful selection and placement of native plants enhances visibility for drivers and keeps wildlife away from roadsides. A strong community of locally adapted native plants will develop a root system that helps stabilize roadside slopes. This further enhances road safety while also protecting nearby waterways from the erosion that would occur if the slopes were unprotected. While not always the least expensive option, roadside revegetation using native plants often offers lower transportation and energy costs for implementation. This leads to fewer carbon emissions and other environmental burdens. When non-native plants are used in roadside revegetation, problems such as weeds and plant failure can increase the long-term costs of roadside maintenance, offsetting any savings that were initially realized. Installing native plants typically reduces the overall long-term road maintenance costs and increases the likelihood of early success. Many visitors to public lands enjoy the journey to their destination as much as the destination itself. Revegetating roadsides with native plants greatly adds to the area's natural beauty and the visitor's overall experience. One of the Federal Highway Administration's vital few goals is environmental stewardship. Roadside revegetation using native plants promotes this goal by helping to establish natural, healthy, and sustainable roadside plant communities. Finally, the principles of roadside revegetation using native plants have been implemented and refined in many climates and locations over many years, and the results are clear. These principles work. Efforts to revegetate roadsides after road construction are not new. But early efforts were often uncoordinated and they over-relied on attractive but non-native species, which usually created more problems than they solved. In the 1980s, the Federal Highway Administration began a series of initiatives to dramatically improve the success rate of revegetation programs. By partnering with the National Park Service on key projects in Glacier National Park and at Lake Mead National Recreation Area, the path to a new, more sustainable approach to roadside revegetation using native plants was established. The first revegetation project that we worked on was the um, 303B piece, which is along the Lake McDonald corridor of the Going to the Sun. And we started planting in 1987, and I believe started planting in 1989. I would say 1990 it was completed, and we have been monitoring it since then. Um, initially, it was monitored every year, then every three years, five years, and I think we're now on a 10-year cycle. The resources that we have available to us in the park are funding from the Federal Highway. Um, it is a great program to work with in that we do have lead time and funding uh, provided to give us time to collect the plant material that we need. Um, we partner with Natural Resources Conservation Service to increase our seed, give us technical advice, and then just an amazing staff of seasonal folks and uh, leaders who help us implement the work here. When we're doing restoration, we're, we're trying to recreate habitat 
and one of our goals is actually to blend into the adjacent undisturbed and so to do that we have to have a variety of life forms including our forbs or wildflowers, the grasses, the carexes, the shrubs and as well as the conifer and deciduous trees. So we really try and capture all of those life forms in our plantings. We look to uh, colonizer species, but also we grow a lot of trees and other life forms so that when we implement a restoration project, we can blend into the adjacent undisturbed vegetation. We found that throughout the entire process of the Lakeshore Road project that from phase to phase the FHWA was extremely helpful, um, very amenable to changes that we wanted to make in our restoration uh, procedures and, and methods uh, throughout the entire thing from phase to phase. We'd make small changes, uh, they would be uh, very supportive of that. They also thoroughly understood that we were experimenting here. We were doing things that we had never done before or that not quite making it up as we went along, but we were using the best knowledge that we had to try things that had never really been done before. Most of the time it turned out very successful. The path to current revegetation techniques was advanced further in the 1990s when the Federal Highway Administration teamed with the United States Forest Service. In the mid-1990s, the U.S. Forest Service and the Federal Highway Administration partnered to form a team of revegetation specialists that would work throughout the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I wanted to see the Forest Service more in charge of its revegetation destiny. I wanted to see the agency use only locally adapted native plant materials. And I also wanted to pioneer new strategies to use those plant materials more wisely. The success of these initial projects proved that this new area of expertise was on the right track. And other federal organizations, such as the Bureau of Land Management, United States Fish and Wildlife Service, and the Bureau of Indian Affairs, further advanced the efforts by offering their support and resources. These years of multi-agency cooperation, research, and trial and error have resulted in universally accepted practices for roadside revegetation using native plants and context-sensitive design, which can be implemented effectively by different agencies in different locations. Some of these techniques include bucket imprinting, hydro seeding, mulching, composting, seed collection and extraction, and vegetated walls. Details on these techniques and other important revegetation topics can be found in two important and widely used resources, the Roadside Revegetation Manual, which is a comprehensive guide covering all aspects of roadside revegetation using native plants, and the nativerevegetation.org website, which includes the complete Roadside Revegetation Manual, as well as in-depth training and interactive visualization to help the user learn about and observe results of the revegetation project lifecycle. The revegetation project lifecycle is a detailed protocol that runs concurrently with the road construction project. It consists of six steps. Initiation, planning, implementation, monitoring and management, adapting and improving, and initiation of future projects. An important aspect of this life cycle is that every revegetation project serves as a resource and knowledge base of best practices for future projects, making revegetation with native plants an ever evolving and improving process. To date, hundreds of projects nationwide have successfully used the revegetation project life cycle. So, the new approach uh, basically integrates throughout the entire process the revegetation with the design and through construction, and then we take what we learn from our monitoring and put it into the next project. I wanted to develop a strategy so that we were working together two to three years before we broke ground on a project, so that we were involved at the planning stage, through the development stage, through the construction stage, and ultimately be able to spend three to four years monitoring the project um, after it was completed.
This project has been a success because there has been a very strong partnership between our regional office, which has a lot of landscape expertise, and our Essex residency, which has a lot of very skillful and dedicated frontline maintenance workers. We we're able to develop a plan and put it into place relatively easily. We're using native vegetation in this, partly because we want to work with what is on site and what is native to the Adirondacks, and partly because there's requirements um, that we use native plants. We have a special program in New York State Department of Transportation called Green and Blue Highways. It's an environmental stewardship initiative where maintenance forces can identify projects of environmental significance and do them with their own forces or with a little bit of extra money from the main office of New York State DOT. Our people in our regional office, our landscape people, came up with a planting plan for vegetation that would be appropriate for this location to help stabilize the soil and to be native vegetation consistent with the location. Music